Hello everyone. Today, I have something very special for you all. This is chapter one of a story written by S.D. Vassallo, especially for Night Terror. The Man Who Loved Horror. Chapter one. Wesley arrived at the library at 427. The library would be closing at five, leaving him a little over 30 minutes. That was more than enough time to return the book he'd brought with him and find a new one to read over the weekend. But he enjoyed browsing through the library selection. Often, he would find a new story just by walking the aisles and letting his eyes wander over the titles and covers. It wasn't out of the ordinary for him to kill two or more hours just wandering through the stacks. Damn traffic, he muttered as he ascended the steps leading from the parking lot up to the building. Picking up his pace, he made his way into the library and over to the desk so he could turn the book. There was an electronic book return on the wall just inside the entrance, but Wesley never used it. He much preferred to hand his book to someone who worked there, so he could observe them checking it in. The verbal reassurance he got from the staff that his book had been checked in made his practice preferable to the use of any machine, no matter how advanced. Afternoon? he said when he reached the desk. Mrs. Pruitt looked up and smiled. She took the book from his hand, ran it under the scanner, glanced at the screen and then looked back up at Wesley. A smile played across her lightly wrinkled face. Though she dressed in a very professional, no-nonsense fashion and her hair was tightly drawn up in an austere bun, her eyes twinkled in a friendly manner. All checked in, she stated. Anything you'd like me to look up? No, he responded. I'm not sure what I want to read next. I think I'll just browse a bit. I'm sure you'll find something good, she said, before going back to the crossword puzzle she had in front of her. Wesley made his way over to the fiction section, and not for the first time felt a twinge of irritation that horror didn't have its own section. They divided science fiction, mysteries and westerns into their own areas. Why not horror? It was just as valid a genre as the others, and in Wesley's opinion, deserved its own classification. If one wanted to browse science fiction to discover a new author, one simply went to that area and looked around. With horror, one had to walk through the whole fiction section, hoping to come across a horror novel. It was fine when searching for a book by an author whose name was known, but it made the discovery of new authors exceedingly difficult. He spent a few minutes walking through the aisles, scanning the spines of the books, hoping for a title to spark his interest. But nothing caught his eye. He went past book after book after book in an endless parade of romance, chick lit and pretentious highbrow mainstream literary novels. As if genre fiction wasn't literary. It seemed to him that one had to write like Faulkner or Joyce to get serious consideration from the powers that be in the world of fiction, and that notion annoyed Wesley to no end. He couldn't stand either Faulkner or Joyce. He'd had to read their material back in college and in his opinion, that was enough for his lifetime. The minutes ticked by, and when Mrs. Pruitt's voice came over the intercom announcing that the library would be closing in five minutes, Wesley was no closer to finding a book than when he'd first entered. He'd just about decided to grab one of the titles he'd read many times before, but then his eyes lit on a black, leather-bound book on the top shelf. There was no title printed on the spine, and it was a rather thick book. It stood out amongst its companions. Wesley reached up and pulled the book down to examine it. On the front cover was printed a single word. Horror. The title was embossed on the cover in gold lettering in a gothic-style font. There was nothing else. No author's name, no publishing company imprint. Nothing. He opened the book and found the first page delved right into the text. No title page, no page with copyright information, no introduction. Only a page of text that began as follows. 
The tale begins at the beginning, and only those who are stout of heart should proceed. Something brushed his hand. He dropped the book and it hit the ground with a resounding thump. For a second it felt as if someone had laid their hand on his and ran it along his skin as if he were being petted. Wesley looked around, but he was alone in the aisle. There was no one in the aisle on the other side of the shelf either. Weird, he thought to himself as he bent over to pick up the book. Must have been my imagination. Fortunately, there didn't appear to be any damage. He stood up straight, opened the book back up and resumed examining it. Wesley flipped through the book and saw that, save for the first page, the text was fairly dense and in a smaller size font. The book was rather thick and... As much was contained on each page, reading it looked to be a major undertaking. He was nonetheless intrigued, and he was out of time. Wesley decided that this would be his weekend read. He made his way to the front desk and handed the book to Mrs. Pruitt. I think I'll try this one, he said. Mrs. Pruitt looked at it, and then opened the back cover and frowned. Was this on the shelf? she asked. Yes, Wesley answered. Why? What's wrong? Well, this doesn't seem to be one of ours. There's no barcode to scan and no stamp from our system marking it as ours. I wonder if someone's left it here. Well, it was on the shelf in the M's, Wesley told her. Is it possible it got put out there accidentally before it got processed? Maybe just forgotten? Perhaps, the librarian said. I suppose I could let you take it. I'll just have to write down a note with your name and... Check into it on Monday morning. We're closed this weekend. Thanks. That would be great, Wesley responded. It looks rather interesting, and I'd quite like to read it. You know how much I love horror stories. Yes, she said with a slight frown. I don't understand why those kind of stories fascinate you so. Wesley shrugged. He couldn't really explain why. He just knew that he loved horror. Nothing compared to the thrills and chills he felt while reading a creepy tale, safe in his comfortable armchair or perhaps in his bed laying on his side and reading with his nice warm blankets curled around him. There really was no explaining it. Well, I hope you enjoy it, Mrs. Pruitt said. She jotted down the information she needed and then handed the book back to Wesley. Have a nice weekend. You have the book for three weeks. Someone will call you if there's a problem and you need to bring it back sooner. You have a nice weekend too, Wesley told her. He made his way back out to his car and was soon on his way home. He stopped for Chinese takeout on the way. Penang curry chicken, egg rolls and some hot and sour soup. Half an hour after leaving the library he was safely ensconced in his favourite armchair with his dinner before him on a TV tray table. He wasted no time diving into his meal. When he finished, he cleared away the mess and then sat back down to begin reading. He set the book down on his tray table. Once he was seated, he opened the book to the first page and began reading. The tale begins at the beginning. Only those who are stout of heart should proceed. The word was spoken, and the universe came into existence. It began as a flickering flame. A tiny light heralding the glories to come. Soon, the flame grew into a roaring fire, and life was born from the heat, scattering into the void like embers in the wind. In those first few moments as time began, the Dark Lady and all her brethren emerged. They were a multitude, setting forth from creation's flame and spreading outward through reality. The Dark Lady made a home in the shadows. She did not fear the light. She loved the light in all of its resplendent glory. It was only from the dark of the shadows that the light could be seen, and there she came to dwell. As the sparks of creation spread through the universe, life began in all its myriad forms. The Dark Lady watched as they oozed and slithered their way into existence. She was there when life dreamed its first dream. She smiled when the first nightmare crept forth, and she opened a door through which that terror entered her realm. He looked up. 
Had he heard a noise? Had he imagined the scrape of something lightly sliding across the floor? The almost silent pad of a stealthy footstep from somewhere behind him? Wesley pushed the small table away and stood up and looked around. He was alone in the front den. A quick scan revealed nothing more than his armchair, a stand with a 56-inch television accompanied by a DVR and a couple of shelves filled with DVDs, a small table next to his armchair with a lamp on it, and the TV tray table. There were no other chairs in the room, or any other pieces of furniture. Wesley was not in the habit of entertaining guests in his house. He lived a mostly solitary life. Satisfied that he was alone and that he must have been imagining things, he sat back down and resumed reading. Through the long march of the countless billions of years from the time of the first flame till now, nightmares and terrors have made their home in the Dark Lady's realm, where still they dwell. What follows, then, is the tale of the horrors, the nightmares, the fears and the frights, the dreadful subjects of the Dark Lady, the denizens of the Dark Realm who worship and serve and do the bidding of her fearful majesty. Her realm should be entered with caution. Wise indeed is the one who steps into her kingdom with eyes open. In the dark, the terrors await. In the dark, they creep and skulk and slither. Take care, lest the horrors catch the wanderer unaware. Light should be avoided while in her realm. A torch does nothing but blind the eyes, and calls the Dark Lady's subject like a moth to a flame. Better to walk quietly in the dark, and learn to see in the shadows. Turn the page, if you dare, and enter her realm. There it was again the sound of something quietly moving. Wesley slid the table away from his chair and stood up. The room was empty save for his furniture and himself, just as it was last time. He walked over to the two steps that led from the small den at the front of his house up to the living room and then the dining room. All was still. All was quiet. Yet he was sure he'd heard something. Wesley ascended the steps and made his way to the kitchen that lay through the doorway on the other side of the dining room. He passed the large, unadorned table that lay in the centre of the room. Though he never used it, Wesley couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. It was one of the few things that he still possessed that had been passed to him when his grandmother passed away and willed her house to him. The table had been where his family had gathered year after year to celebrate the holidays together. He had many good memories that had taken place around it, and though he now ate all of his meals in front of the den, he couldn't bear to be part with the antique table. The light was on in the kitchen. Wesley stepped through the doorway into the small room and looked around. Everything was in its proper place. A stove along the wall, a couple of feet in front of the doorway, a counter leading from the stove to the side of the sink. More cabinets on the other side of the sink, a door leading to the back room of the house, and then the refrigerator. Everything was put away in its proper place in the cabinets. The countertops were empty, except for a microwave and toaster. With a start, Wesley realised the door to the back room was closed. That was... odd. It was always left open. He crossed the kitchen to the door and stood before it, gathering his courage. He placed his hand on the doorknob and turned it disobeying one of the fundamental rules of every horror story he'd ever read and every scary movie he'd ever watched. If you hear a strange noise from a closet or from inside a room for which the door was closed, don't go in. Don't open the door and look inside. When a door is closed that shouldn't be, don't open it. Nothing good ever came to the person that did so in all of those stories. Nonetheless, Wesley had to know if something was in there. The door creaked open as Wesley pushed it. The room was dark, but with the light from the kitchen he was able to see through it to the back door of the house. It was empty save for the washing machine and dryer in the small alcove to the left. Immediately after the two machines was an inset of shelves upon which lay towels, 
washcloths and spare sheets for his bed. He turned back to the kitchen, leaving the back room door open, and went to the small hallway on the other side of the room from the sink. Straight ahead of him lay a bathroom. The small hallway in front of the bathroom led to bedrooms on the right and left. The left-hand bedroom was empty and unused. The one on the right was Wesley's bedroom. It had once been his grandmother's. He stepped into the hallway and slowly, cautiously, walked into his bedroom and turned on the light. Nothing moved within. The queen bed was still perfectly made, not a wrinkle on the blankets. All of the dresser drawers were closed and the sliding doors of the closet on the opposite side of the room were closed. It occurred to Wesley that maybe someone or something was hiding in the closet. He crossed the room and again tempted fate by sliding the doors open. A quick examination revealed that only his clothing lay within, neatly arranged on hangers by type. He stepped back from the closet and closed the sliding doors. When the hand came down on Wesley's shoulder, he screamed. If you enjoyed chapter one of this story by S.D. Vassallo, please make sure to like and subscribe and click that notification bell to be notified as soon as a new video arrives. You don't want to miss chapter two.